Good afternoon, everybody. It's Dr. Galvin with another coronavirus update. Today, we're going to be talking vaccines and a lot of news in, uh, uh, out there about Pfizer's vaccine, 90% effective. We're going to talk a little bit about what that means, whether it's actually a cure, whether we can kind of, you know, take a collective sigh of relief and be done with this. Unfortunately, as you know from these videos, the, the truth is, is sometimes different than what you see on on the press reports. Um, for those of you new to the broadcast, my name is Jeffrey Galvin. I'm a board certified emergency medicine physician, as well as a precision medicine, functional medicine physician outside of Charlotte, North Carolina. I still actively work in the emergency department, been doing updates about the virus and also about wellness and other topics uh, for quite a while now. Please look at our YouTube channel or our Facebook page for all types of videos about the virus. Hopefully answer any questions. If you like this, please follow us on Facebook and subscribe to us on YouTube. As we often do, we talk about numbers and you know, uh, unfortunately numbers are sobering. Worldwide, close to 51 million cases, 1.26 million deaths here in the US. We've crossed 10 million cases. 241,000 deaths. We've had over the last um, week, we've had a running, you know, a, a seven day moving average for the first time. It's above 100,000 cases a day. And unfortunately, we're getting to a point where we're starting to see exponential growth of the virus. And you can see here our little initial spike, the spike in the summer when we, we closed, we opened up restrictions too early. And now we're getting this exponential number. And Unfortunately, um, my prediction is that within a week or two, we're going to probably see well in excess of 200,000 cases a day because we've got so much community spread. The virus is everywhere. It's very easy to get exposed. Now we're going to see a lot of infections. But to the point of the matter today, the vaccine. So Pfizer came out and made this announcement that they've got a vaccine that's 90% effective. And that sounds like great news, but what does it really mean? What does that 90% mean? Um, and, and what does it mean to us in terms of these numbers and protecting us from getting the virus or our family members or friends and, and loved ones getting the virus? Well, you got to realize that Pfizer is one of many companies that are developing vaccines. Right now, there are 11 or so that are in that final phase three trial. And what Pfizer did for their trials, same as everybody else, they enrolled about 44,000 patients in this trial starting in July. And it's a double blind study, meaning that the researchers don't know who gets the vaccine, who gets the placebo, the, the volunteers don't know. And essentially they got all are getting this immunization. Half of the people are getting the vaccine. The other half are getting saline, you know, nothing. Um, and the way it works is that they have to wait for a certain number of people in the study to develop COVID naturally, just out in the population until they can analyze it. And the study's not over till they've had 164 positive cases out of that um, 44,000 people enrolled. But they had 97 cases, so they took it and they gave that data to an independent committee that could actually look at it. And what they, that they determined was that it was 90% effective. So presumably, when they looked at those 97% of uh, those 97 cases, 90% of those people were from the placebo group, the group that did not get the immunization, and only a tiny number got the immunization. So they're saying, well, preliminary data looks like it's 90% effective. Now, they won't finish the study until they enroll, until they get 164 positive cases. Probably by the end of this month, they'll have that um, uh, uh, number. Now, those numbers are actually really excellent. 90% is great. Flu vaccine is simply 40 to 60% um, uh, effective. Uh, the measles vaccine is 97% effective, but it's two doses. And this is a two dose RNA virus, meaning that this is a very clever virus. We haven't really had RNA virus uh, vaccines before, but essentially RNA is the code. And it's like, a, it's like an instruction sheet. You give it to the patient and that RNA gets incorporated into the, the, the ribosomes. And basically the, the body follows that instructions. And the instructions are for the body to produce the spike protein of the SARS-CoV-2 uh, virus, the protein that makes the virus stick to cells. It all, doesn't make any of the rest of the virus, just that one protein. It's a foreign protein, even though it's being made by our body and we make antibodies against that protein. And then if you get exposed to the virus, you have those antibodies and you're immune. So it's very, very clever, um, difficult to, to manufacture, 
but this is really the first example. We've had other RNA vaccines before, but this is the first large scale one. Um, Moderna's got an RNA virus uh, vaccine as well. Um, other ones are using pieces of, of deactivated virus. There's a variety of different ways of making these, um, these, these uh, vaccines. Now, there's 10 more in phase three. Typically phase three vaccines, about two thirds of them are effective. So we could presumably have five, six um, more vaccines available at some time in the next six months or so. Um, there have not been any serious side effects or safety concerns so far, although Pfizer will follow those initial 44,000 people for two years to see if there's any long-term effects. But so far, it's been pretty, pretty effective. In the phase two trials, they do different dosages and they pick like what they're gonna use in phase three based on that. So they probably had you know, different dosages and maybe some of them had viral side effects or something like that. And they've decided from that phase two what to use in phase three. In phase three, they're using what they think is the most effective one. Um, and so that's good news about safety. Now, what about availability? Well, you gotta understand that you know, Pfizer says that if they get approval, and they're not gonna get approval until they get final data, and, and other people, you know, this, this is basically a press release so far, it hasn't been peer reviewed, but just presuming it, it's, it holds up, um, then you might say that you know, maybe they'll get emergency use granted, you know, maybe in December. Um, and they say that they can make 30 to 40 million doses by the first of the year. Now, realize that it's a two dose vaccine. So that can, you know, that's gonna be able to immunize 15 to 20 million people, but that's worldwide. That's not only in the US. And who are those people gonna be that are gonna get it initially? probably healthcare providers and those people are really at risk. Um, what that means is, and they think they can do 1.3 billion doses um, you know, next year. And again, two doses, so 750 million people drop in the bucket uh, of what's needed, right? So we're not gonna have a cure for this anytime soon. When is it gonna be available? Let's say that everything goes according to plan, which rarely happens, it may be available you know, generally by the springtime, and it might take six months to a year to immunize everybody. So it's not a cure, it's not gonna do anything about this. This is important to know. Um, they have studied in older patients, so some of those 44,000 are greater than 65. They initially limited it to 18 or older only, but um, I believe in September they started enrolling 16 and older, and last month they added, they went down to 12 years old and older. It's not been studied in young children or, or that uh, yet. It's it's not a cure, but if you get the if you get the vaccine and it's effective, your chance of developing COVID looks like it's reduced by ninety percent, which is you know a great great thing. But I think we need to look at it with a you know with you know with our reality glasses on and, and realize that these numbers are doing nothing but getting worse. And for the next three or four months, we are going to see explosions of cases explosions of hospitalizations, and unfortunately, probably explosions in deaths. Um, and the virus is not gonna be ready to, to deal with any of this. So it's good news. It looks like we're making progress. It's not going to fix what, what has to be done, which means you gotta stay safe. You gotta keep doing the things that we know work, masks, social distancing, washing your hands, and using your brain. Avoid you know crowded places, avoid things that are, are with a lot of singing or yelling or things like that, where you're close together with people and in closed space with limited air circulation, those are the, that's a recipe for getting it. Um, one of my patients who, who, who has COVID right now uh, told me, you know, the circle's getting smaller. And she's absolutely right. It means that, you know, whereas, you know, early in the, early in the, the pandemic, the pandemic um, you know, you might've known somebody two, three steps away from you that may have had it. Now it's becoming, primary, secondary relatives, people that you see all the time, and more and more. Just this week alone, um, I've gotten informed that we've had like four patients that have tested positive, and I probably know another dozen people, just friends and acquaintances that, that have developed it over just over the last week, and those numbers are going up and up and up. And so nationwide, we're at about 9.5% positivity rate, which is much, much too high. Anyway, stay safe. Good news, not a cure yet, but may put us on the path to getting out of this, you know, this pandemic uh, sooner rather than later. Uh, I'm Dr. Galvin again. Follow us, like us on Facebook, um, and follow us on YouTube. I will be back later in the week with more content. Stay safe, wear your mask, wash your hands, social distance, take care of yourselves, take care of your families, and think about other people as well. Have a great day.